So shout out to Anthony Beckford who posted this article on Facebook and I probably wouldn't have caught this but he posted it with um, the caption the Republicans are the first to benefit from criminal justice reform okay so let's read this article what Brian Cole's arrest means for bail reform the assembly minority leaders arrest came at the worst time for Republicans getting arrested on New Year's Eve for allegedly drinking and driving New York Assemblyman Brian Kolb is pleading not guilty for a New Year's crash. The former minority leader is accused of driving while intoxicated. Authorities say Kolb crashed his state-owned SUV into a ditch near his home in Victor, at southeast of Rochester. Kolb has since resigned from his leadership post. A judge has suspended his driver's license, but Kolb is allowed to drive to and from work. Is bad enough. But Assembly Minority Leader Brian Kolb drove his state-issued GMC Acadia into a ditch at an especially inopportune time for Republicans, transforming himself in the process into one of the first beneficiaries of bail reforms that he vociferously opposed. Uh, but just recently, we had a, a situation in Wayne County in upstate uh, where a gentleman was arrested uh, for DWI, and uh, he was also an undocumented immigrant. And uh, basically, they were starting to uh, trial the bail reform measure in this particular case. Uh, so he didn't, he didn't get in front or uh, help uh, by bail, even after the recommendation by the district attorney uh, to do so. And the gentleman was released back on the street a couple weeks later, gets behind the wheel of a car again, driving while intoxicated, and kills uh, a gentleman on the side of the road. And, you know, some people say, well, that's just an exception. Well, to me, if I'm that gentleman that was killed, that's not an exception to me or my family. And that's really the concerns we have is, you know, you can always find good examples. Well, hey, look at this worked over here. But if you just look at the list of offenses uh, that there's basically you're getting an appearance ticket. And then even Mayor de Blasio in New York City says, well, we'll give him Mets tickets. So we'll give him incentive to show up. Really? You've broken our law, and now you're going to, again, reward to try to create an incentive where they should be uh, showing up without incentive because that's what law-abiding citizens do. So there's... I think we can predict that January 1st is going to come and this law is going to go into effect. Um, what will you be looking out for? Is there the resource to be able to keep a close eye on how the suspension of pretrial detention actually works once it's put into place? Oh, we'll know. And we'll know immediately. We'll know the month after, three months after. My my greatest fear, and uh, hopefully it all works out. If it does, okay, we can say whew, we'll breathe a sigh of relief. Nobody got hurt. Nobody uh, had a repeat offense that uh, you know other uh, negative consequences took place. Is that the hope? Absolutely. We don't want anything to go wrong. We believe, though, the way they've structured this bill, it, it will uh, be repeated, and the it, it will uh, be repeated, and the it, it will. Uh, be repeated, and the amount of speed that uh, uh, district attorneys have to tr provide uh, provide information, it's it's not reasonable. And so there's a lot of nuances that the general public, you know, doesn't want to wrap its arms around, which I understand. Uh, that's up to us to try to do that. Uh, but I'm hoping we have no negative consequences. But we're concerned. The uh, district attorney is concerned. Law enforcement officers are concerned. The judicial system is concerned that just the opposite is going to happen. While Kolb is much more politically powerful than your average criminal suspect, his case is fairly typical of those affected by the new bail law. Besides undermining Republican claims to be the party of law and order, Kolb looks especially hypocritical because he got arrested for drunk driving just one week after he penned an op-ed urging others to Drive safely this holiday season. Assemblyman Brian Cole blamed his wife on the night. Blamed his wife on the night. Two days later. No, I, w I was not blaming my wife. I was kidding around and they took it that I was serious. I would never blame my wife. Yeah, but that was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> See, I never just did things just to do them. Come on, I mean, what am I going to do? Just, just all of a sudden just jump up and grind my feet on somebody's couch? Like it's like it's you know something to do. Come on, I got a little more sense than that. Yeah, I remember grinding my feet in Eddie's couch. Lani, baby, come take a look at this. I mean, he didn't cheat on his wife, but he attempted to throw her under the bus and then retracted it. My belief system says that for Europeans, the highest value for them is in subject-object, member 
object. So the important fact to them is the external, the object. That's the highest value. The food has been preserved, allocated, and stored for 10 months. Someone has to make a decision about when do you start eating this pile so you don't run out. So the men, because of their physical strength, makes the determination. In North Central Europe 12,000 12, years ago, how could you know when a month would begin? You could observe the what? Well, no, what, once a month, the what? The moon, yes. But right here in New York, there are many times you couldn't see the moon. But whom among us, with great clarity and regularity, can tell us one month from another? Yes, because of their what? Menstrual cycle. Now, why was the menstrual so important? Because you could learn how to do what before men? Yes. If your husband told you in February, at the end of the third moon, you can plant snow is up to here, would you believe that crap? No. But at the end of the third moon, February, March, April, May, you can start to what? Plant. You see how powerful that was? It's a very powerful thing. Very powerful thing. But it was too much power for one. It had to be taken away from you. Okay? Now, what happens is there has to be a point at which the determination is made, and physical strength was used in Europe. And the men took over because they had the physical strength to maintain the what? And keep the what? Object. He simply said, get out! He told you to get out in February, North Central Europe. What would happen to you? You'd freeze to death and die. So from that point on, European women have to act how in the presence of the men? Submissive and subordinate. And every single one of their laws then becomes real for that. According to European law, European women are the what of their husbands? Property, Property and chattel, which makes them philosophically a what? Yes. According to European law, the moment a European woman marries, her dowry becomes her husband's what? Why would her dowry be his property? Because if she acts simple, he could threaten to divorce her, and she would be what? Penniless. Now here's something else that came up. In order for them to control their women and to maintain discipline, they had the rule of thumb in English common law. And the rule of thumb says, you have a right as a man to discipline your wife with what? A stick the size of your thumb. A stick the size of your thumb. So you give her a sound. Blamed his wife on the night he was arrested for drunk driving, according to police. And police say Kolb's blood alcohol content was twice the legal limit from records released today. Kolb, who represents Ontario County, stepped down from his role as minority leader after he was arrested for drunk driving last week. There's a lot of new information about what happened the night Assemblyman Kolb was arrested. Atia Collins is working the story for us, and she joins us now. Atia. Well, Adam, police say State Assemblyman Brian Kolb was caught because of a triple A driver. Kolb, they say, called the tow truck after his SUV slid off his driveway on Country Road 41 in Victor. Now, according to this paperwork, Kolb told the driver his wife was driving. He said, you know how women drive and that she was now inside of the house. Because it was a property damage crash, the tow truck driver, by protocol, had to call police. Police say when they got there, Kolb was slurring his words and smelled of alcohol. His BAC content level, they say, was twice the legal limit. They say he told them he had four to five cocktails earlier in the evening at a restaurant in Pittsford. Police say he then told them that he drove home. Now, Kolb has since apologized for the incident, calling it a terrible lapse in judgment. All right. And as far as we know, he is no longer assembly minority leader. Where does that stand? Exactly, Adam. As you said earlier, he did step down for his position as assembly minority leader, but he said in a statement that he will continue to serve as an assembly member. But he said in a statement that he will continue to serve as an assembly member. We are following some breaking news into the News Channel 2 newsroom. The top Republican in the state assembly charged with DWI has stepped down from his position. What am I trying to show you? I keep saying we don't need new laws because whatever laws they use, they find a way to use it against them and to their own benefit. Here we have somebody who was against criminal justice reform, but then he ends up benefiting from the same criminal justice reform for the same crime that he was demonizing criminal justice reform for. This is why you can't infiltrate white supremacy and change it from the inside. 
because they keep changing the rules on us. constantly looking for the rules in America. Our whole experience here, we want to know what are the rules to be accepted by the dominant society? What are the rules to not experience racism in America? And every time we learn one rule, we're told those rules don't apply and there's another rule. When African Americans were first dropped off from the slave ships, we said, okay, what do we need to do to be accepted by the dominant society? We were told, well, if you change your name from those African names, we'll accept you then. So African people said, okay, we'll change our names. Can we be accepted? They said, well, no, not quite, because now you're using that voodoo and that African religion. If you take on our religion, then we'll accept you. So black people said, well, that's not a problem. I mean, we're familiar with Christianity because we have a version of that in Africa. The whole European Jesus thing, that's a new thing for us. But if you'll accept us and you'll lay off the racism, no problem. We'll be better Christians than you. Can we be accepted? The dominant society said, well, no, not quite, because now that African voodoo is still there. So maybe if you weren't so lazy, we'll accept you. So black people said, OK, well, we're, we're slaves. Nobody works harder than a slave. We pick all this cotton. We do all this work. Nobody works harder than us. Can we be accepted? So the dominant society said, well, no, because now slavery is over and we don't need your work no more. So black people said, OK, well, how about hiring us since we have all the skills? The dominant society said, well, no, not quite, because we have white only unions, so we don't need that. So African-American people said, OK, well, look, how about we just build our own communities? We'll build our our Tulsa, Oklahoma's, our Central Avenues in Los Angeles, we'll build our own prosperous communities and we'll just leave you be. How about that? The dominant society said, well, no, you can't do that because now you're making a little more money than us and now you're becoming a threat, so we're gonna burn those little communities down. So black people said, okay, how about this? We'll work for you, just hire us, we'll keep our heads up, we'll have dignity, will you accept us? The dominant society said, well, no, because you're being uppity now. We don't want uppity black folks. So. Black people said, okay, well, how about this? We'll just shuck and jive, we'll be entertainment for you. We'll tap dance, skin and grin, coon, do whatever. Can we be accepted? The dominant society said, well, we love the entertainment part of you, but we can't really respect that, so we won't accept you. So black people said, well, we'll just drop out completely. We won't even try to be accepted by you. We'll just hang out on the corner. We won't even try to become part of the dominant society. We'll just hang out in front of the liquor store. If we see something we like, we'll take it. We'll just do our thing. The dominant society said, well, no, you do that, we're gonna arrest you. So black people said, okay, well, how about we just go in the house? We'll just get crumbs from you. We'll just stay in the house and watch TV because that way we can escape racism. But the thing is, when you look at television, what do you see? Negative image, negative image, negative image, negative image of African-American people. So the bottom line is there are no rules for the dominant society to accept black people as a whole. All the rules are there to keep you marginalized. And that brings us to rule number one, keep people confused as to what racism is. We have been told that we are living in a democracy. We have been told that we are in a system where there is equal opportunity for everyone. Tragically, we have been told a gigantic lie, and that lie has been told over and over and over and over again. We are living in a system of racism, white supremacy. It is not a system of equal opportunity. So if you guys have seen my live, I've mentioned a couple of times about this prison reform bill and how I feel that it is Trump's way of um, pre-paving pre the way to um, be able to get his family members and his close friends off as they all get marched into jail 
like one by one. They are falling like a house of cards, okay? Um, so I'm going to explain to you, this is going to be a long one. Please just follow me. Trust me, I don't make a long unless I have to, okay? So I'm going to take you through um, what this bill entails and the things that stood out to me, okay? Um, so I'm going to be reading from congress.gov, and I'm also going to be reading from... Um, civilrights.org okay and when i read you're going to hear me say the bureau of prisons very often okay when you think of the bureau of prisons i want you to think of the attorney general okay so the attorney general used to be jeff sessions jeff sessions was so horrible that coretta scott king wrote letters trying not to get him in advancement in his legal career with this with his home state okay so that's how bad he was but trump picked him for attorney general because of that pretty much right and then Jeff Sessions, as a lawman, he recused himself for the Mueller investigation, which Trump gave him so much smoke that Jeff Sessions then recently uh, stepped down from attorney general. So right now, the acting attorney general is Matthew Whitaker, okay? But every time I say the Bureau of Prisons, I'm just going to just think about Jeff Sessions' replacement because Trump has not appointed the new attorney general yet, okay? So I'm just going to say Jeff Sessions' replacement, okay? Because I want you to get that picture in your head, okay? So every time I say the Bureau of Prisons, understand that the Bureau of Prisons is under the Attorney General's office, Jeff Sessions' replacement. All right, let's go. So one, Title I, Recidivision Reduction. The Bureau of Prisons, Jeff Sessions, must implement the risk and needs assessment system. The bill modifies the computation of a good time credit and allow a prisoner to earn a maximum of 54 days per year of the sentence imposed instead of 54 days per year of the sentence actually served, okay? That sounds really good until you think about the fact that Jeff Sessions is the one who's going to implement this risk assessment, okay? And this is from civilrights.org. The act purports to offer to people in prison the chance to earn to earn time credits toward early release and pre-release custody, but by building and placing a risk and a needs assessment algorithm in the hands of Attorney General Jeff Sessions, one not to be required to be designed or tailored for the individuals that it is meant to judge. And I'm going to correct that, and it is designed to, 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 to hit the individuals, to accommodate the individuals that it is meant to judge. It's not for us. We risking embedding deep racial and class bias into decisions that are heavily that heavily impact the lives and futures of federal prisoners and their families. They don't care. Okay, this is so they can get their people off. All right. Researchers have shown that risk assessment tools applied in sentencing decisions in Florida meant to predict recidivism were twice as likely to be wrong when evaluating black people as white people. One of the first independent studies analyzing the use of risk assessment in pretrials showed that decision makers using risk assessment tools, in this case, Kentucky judges, Kentucky, ignored the result, ignored their results over time. OK, because why? Because ultimately it's by the Bureau of Prisons. Ignore the results over time while also overseeing an increase in failures to appear at court and increase in pretrial arrests. And for the recent analysis show that the risk assessment tools are as accurate as the prediction made by a random human selected over the Internet. And it goes on to talk about how we can't have this, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, Section 3, the Government Accountability Office, same thing, okay? Jeff Sessions must audit the use of the risk and needs of the assessment system at the Bureau of Prisons. So Jeff Sessions is going to, is going to evaluate Jeff Sessions. Okay. This is misplaced incentive, effectively reducing recidivism. This is from uh, uh, the civil rights org. Effective, effectively reducing recidivism requires targeting those most likely to reoffend with rehabilitative programming. Yet under this bill, only minimum and low risk prisoners would be allowed to redeem their earned time credits. So who do you think that they're going to re they're going to deem as minimum and low risk? Nobody with melanin. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going. The overbroad list, this is also from um, Civil Rights, the overbroad list of exclusions. The majority of people in prison will eventually be released. Categorically excluding the entire groups of people from receiving early release credits will undermine the efforts to reduce prison overcrowding. And I say this bill is not to reduce prison overcrowding. This is to get Trump's people out of jail when they are subsequently convicted. Because you see they fall in like dominoes. Okay. Title two. Is the Bureau of Prisons Secure Firearm Storage? That's basically about um, correctional officers being able to use their firearms um, when they're not at work or hold them when they're not at work or outside the prison or whatever. None of our business. Um, restraints on pregnant prisoners prohibited. 
that should go without saying um but okay um now more juice title four miscellaneous criminal justice okay section 401 the bill amends the federal the federal criminal code to direct the borough prisons jeff sessions to place a prisoner in a facility that is not more than 500 miles away from the prisoner's primary residence subject to bed availability, bed availability and prisoner's security designation to specify that the designation of prison placement is not reviewable by a court. So now the Bureau of Prisons, Jeff Sessions, has the right to move anybody wherever he wants. He can, he can, he can keep you under 500 miles away from wherever or he cannot. And this is not reviewable by a court, which means you can't fight it. Okay, once again, not for melanated people. All right, section 402. The Bureau of Prisons, Jeff Sessions, must place low-risk prisoners in on home confinement for the maximum amount of time permitted. You already know who that's going to be for. The Bill Amends Second Chance Act of 2007 to reauthorize FY2022 and modify eligibility for elderly offender early release pilot program. Honey, aren't most of these people that they're indicting over a certain age? Okay. Okay, um, the borough prisons must, uh, as a part of pre-release planning procedures, help a prisoner obtain identification, including social security card, driver's license, other official identification, and birth certificate. Okay, that's good. 405, the bill authorized federal prison industries to sell products to new markets as the District of Columbia government and non-profit organizations. Okay, so now we're going to go back to, we're going to go to civilrights.org. Allows for the privatization of certain public functions and allows private entities to profit from incarceration. The bill retains provision that in order to expand programming and, product and productive, product productive activities, the Attorney General... Jeff Sessions shall develop policies for each of the wardens, each of the Bureau of Prison facilities to enter into partnerships with private entities and industry-sponsored organizations. Section 04, the Bureau of Prison must incorporate specialized and comprehensive de-escalation procedures into its training programs. We already see how that's working out with the police. Um, the Bureau of Prison must report on its capacity to treat heroin and opioid abuse through the evidence-based programs, including medic medication-assisted treatment. We already know who that's for because they don't try to help us. We are super predators. And when they are, it's a problem. It's a, it's a medical condition. Okay, so you don't know who that's for, okay? Because the Bureau of Prison is also uh, uh, taking care of that, too. All right. 408, the Bureau of Prisons must establish pilot programs on youth mentorship and service to abandoned, rescued, or vulnerable animals. What? Why in the... I'm, I'm, I'm confused about the animal part, okay? But youth mentorship, okay, here's the thing. Allows for privatization of certain... They did not put in there... They've already cut spending, so now they have no money for these programs that they're talking about they want to implement. So that's a catch-22 right there. It sounds good, but it really isn't, okay? They have no way to actually implement this. Probation on pretrial services, uh, let's see, I'm just going to skip down. I'm going to skip down, okay? The over, this is uh, civilrights.org. The overbroad discretion provided to Attorney, Jeff Se Attorney General Jeff Sessions. The bill gives broad authority to the Attorney General and would rely on implementa implementation by this administration. Despite assurances to the contrary, this administration has failed to take any steps to improve the criminal justice system, blah, blah, blah. Omission of sentencing reform. Sentencing reform and both prison reform are important, but one will not work without the other. Meaningful reform requires both, okay? So... Basically, what I'm trying to tell you guys is this is just a bunch of smoke and mirrors. They make it sound like there's something that's going to help, you know, our family members that are locked up. But in actuality, when you dig into this, I really believe that this is only being implemented and thoughts of being implemented and being uh, uh, brought forth as bills and laws to be changed just so they could get the people that are about to be indicted off. This is not for melanated people. And that's the end because it's getting long.